Stocks are retreating today as the crisis in Kabul turned deadly. Joining us now to discuss is Peter Morisi, UMD economist, and David Bonson, the Bonson Group managing partner. Guys, good to see you both. Peter, the markets now seem to realize the political risk of what's happening in Afghanistan. I mean, it was clear to all of us they were kind of hoping, I think, that that uh, all of the, the benefits of a, of a strong, growing economy, it's still over 6% right now, uh, that that would override it. But this, this is getting so dangerous. Uh, I think this is, is, is it possible it could turn into a black swan event where it could really bring the market down? That is possible. I, I don't want to predict that, but it, it does raise questions about uh, Joe Biden's stewardship generally. This is something tangible and real that people can see on their television sets. Now, why should they take his word on so many economic issues? For example, his economic package that he says will increase productivity and, and, and promote growth and all the rest. Especially, we have to see this in the context of what Democratic mayors tolerated last summer in our cities what Joe Biden has done on our southern borders. Is America any longer a secure place to invest? Is it any longer soundly run? The answer at this point is we have children, amateurs in the West Wing. The country is not in good hands. America is at great peril. And I I saw David uh, shaking his head no when I asked the question. I think you disagree. Go ahead, David. Well, I certainly agree with Peter about the state of competence of those in the White House and the dangers that are presented right now in this geopolitical sense. But it's not a black swan. I was shaking my head a little. Well, it it is not. First of all, black swans can't be predicted. That's what makes them black swans. But, David, the market was down 20, 30 points in the S&P this morning before the uh, Kabul uh, news came out. We ended up going down 190 points. We've been up, I think, four or 500 on the week. So it's just really hard to say the markets responded 0.2% to this incident. I, I agree it's a disaster. I agree it's a tragedy. And I agree that we're in a very precarious position, g- geopolitically, global safety, and so forth. But Peter's point's important. If anything for markets, and that's all I'm talking about here, so I'm sort of not talking like a human being, this probably helps in the sense that it uh, generates that lack of confidence in Biden's economic plan. Markets don't want Biden's economic plan. And so I just don't think that this story of what's going on over there has really leaked into the actual U.S. stock market, David. That's all I'm saying. All right. You've got about 30 seconds. Go ahead, Peter. Well, the important thing here is the swing Democrats. They're going home. Uh, What do they hear from their constituents after this disaster? Uh, His job approval rating before today was down negative 11 points. It's going to get much worse. Is that enough to get them to come back and say to Nancy Pelosi, I can't vote for this nonsense. I can't believe Joe Biden is providing competent leadership that we can agree believe in. And that would be good for the country in the sense that we wouldn't get this terrible package. Got to leave it at that. Peter, David, thank you very much. We'll be back with more Kudlow in a moment. 